Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. I want to show you guys something here today. I kind of made a big mistake down in the basement with our radiant floor system. And you guys know I'll always be honest with you. And when I screw up, I would like to show you guys so that you don't make the same mistakes. And hopefully in the long run, it doesn't cost you as much money as it's costing me. All right, so I came out here the other day and uh, the pressure on the radiant system was looking a little low. And this is pretty much how I have to like bleed the system every year or every fall. Uh, I'm not changing out the fluid. I'm simply just getting the pressure up because it sat for so long. And obviously up there on the air uh, water separator, some pressure can leak out of there over time. And when it sits all summer long, that ends up happening. Well, I wanted to put a little bit of uh, pressure into it and I ended up getting some major air bubbles in it. I screwed up big time, couldn't get the air bubbles out and then I let it run all night long. Well, I think I ended up breaking one of my pumps. So this guy over here that controls uh, the basement, this guy was a 1 12th horsepower pump. And when I bought it from Menards a few years ago, it said 112 could easily handle like one to nine runs. And as you can see, we only have six runs. And then this one over here was a 125th pump. And it said that it could easily handle one to like six runs. And out in the garage, we only have three. So both pumps were appropriate for what I was using. But unfortunately, one mistake that I have done that I have now realized is that a tankless water tank is just not a way to do radiant. In fact, I think a 50 gallon regular hot water tank would be a better idea. And that's because usually in a boiler, I think there's a lot less pressure drop. The water is able to go through a lot easier. And that's why I say with a 50 gallon tank, water I think can go through a lot easier than all these like micro tiny little tubes that snake all up in there. So because of that restriction, that wasn't the best idea, even though our pumps were perfectly suited and should have been fine. But what we ended up noticing over time is our water returning was just not hot enough. You should not have that much of a difference in temperature from what's going out from what's coming back. And as you can see, we have our tank set to 120 degrees. Our gauges down here are easily reading 120 degrees, but we were only coming back in the house at about 70 degrees. And out in the garage, we were only coming at back at about 60 to 70 degrees also. So that is way too different of a Delta difference basically telling you that the tankless is a problem and we should have gone with a boiler. And I don't even want to know how I would calculate that, but I think we were using way too much propane to constantly go from 70 up to 120. We're out in the garage again, 60 to 70 up to 120. So it just basically wasn't an efficient system. So it was kind of a blessing that uh, I did not notice this pump was uh, basically having an air bubble in it. It must have been locked because it was really hot to the touch. The tank was running, but it was like on off on off because on the other end here, the flow was so slow that the thing was basically turning on and then having to turn off and then turn on and having to turn off. So I spent all day, probably six or seven hours trying to get this 120 or 112 pump to work. The 125th out in the garage was working, but this thing was not working. So I said, finally, I had enough. Screw it. Let's go to the store. We're going to upgrade. So instead of spending like $5,000 on a, rear bo a real boiler, one thing that you can kind of get around is if you made a mistake like me is to upgrade your pumps. So what we went and bought is the same Grunfuss uh, pump with high, medium, and low, but they are now 1 6th pumps. So this thing basically doubled in horsepower and this thing more than doubled in horsepower that now when we're looking for the first time ever looking at our returns, it looks like this has only been on for about a half hour, maybe less. Uh, we're at 90 degrees. So we've gone up 20 degrees hotter on our return than we were before. And while I did just spend $800 on these two freaking pumps, 800 on those, 
900 on this is still cheaper than a $5,000 boiler to actually do it right. But this was kind of like a temporary fix because no one has boilers in stock. It's still winter out. I needed heat. It's getting 20 degrees at nighttime still. So I had to get it to work. So unfortunately, I had to sacrifice $800. But I'm so much more happy that uh, we can have these bigger pumps. And these guys say they can go from like 1 to 20 runs or something. So they're quite big. If we ever do upgrade the boiler though, or get rid of the tankless and go with the boiler, and these are too powerful, Right now they're on the fast setting. We can go to medium and low, but I don't know why you wouldn't want your system to go as fast as possible. Cause the only analogy that I can think of is if I'm running outside of the RV and I'm walking slow as can be to the garage, I'm going to get cold by the time I get to the garage. So these floors like over here in the uh, gym and utility room as they're the returns, this concrete over here really is only 70 degrees. So that's basically like walking really, really slow as opposed to you leave the RV and you go towards the house and you sprint, you're not gonna get as cold. So by having the pumps go as fast as they can with the most horsepower that you can, I would think you would spend less on propane because again, your Delta is a hell of a lot closer. 30 degrees right now, obviously, is a hell of a lot better than 50. And then again, now that we're seeing 90 degrees return over here, we now have 20 degrees more that our concrete is going to be able to heat up. Like, for example, again, here in the gym, which means that if it's 20 degrees warmer, this area is going to heat up a lot sooner, which also should then kick the boiler off faster. So we're saving propane, hopefully two different ways. One, that Delta difference again. And then also the ambient air should heat up a lot faster because it's no longer as cold on this side of the house as it is on that side of the house. So hopefully that made sense. Hopefully again, you guys just do it right from the get go. I don't think everyone needs like a $5,000 boiler, although the 5,000 ones I think are combi boilers. So they would be doing your uh, radiant floor and your domestic hot water. We spent 900 on this guy and 900 on that guy so that we could keep them separated because I needed the uh, glycol solution since the garage, obviously, if that power would ever go off, we didn't want the pipes out in the garage to break and freeze. Uh, here in the basement, the pipes would never freeze because the ground underneath of us only gets down to about 55 Fahrenheit. But out in the garage, it could easily get down to below 32 and even below zero, probably pretty easy if the power is off for several days. So I could not get a combi boiler, but uh, I think a regular boiler you could probably get for about 2,500 bucks, which I'm still saving by doing this and this. Hopefully I can maybe sell these pumps or to see if that pump is broken or if we can get it to work again. But yeah, just don't make the mistakes that I did. Spend the money, I guess. Get the correct pumps from the get-go and uh, get yourself at least a, uh, a real boiler. And uh, if I did the math correctly to figure out what size boiler you need, if you just want to do it really like crude, they basically just do uh, the square footage of the area you're trying to heat and you multiply it by like 25 or 35. So the basement down here is about 18. Out in the garage is about 950. So that's about 2,750 square feet. So if we go the absolute max, 2,750 times 35 uh, BTUs per square foot, that's what the 25 to 35 meant. We only need 96,250 BTU boiler. So that's actually a pretty small boiler that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on. Now that domestic tankless water tank, that thing is 200,000 BTU. So we're more than double what we actually need. So maybe that combo of the stronger pumps and that tankless will end up working out for us. But again, we probably should have just went with a less restrictive boiler to begin with maybe spend a little bit more money and we wouldn't have had to deal with this headache to begin with. So a little interruption here. The uh, fingers crossed did not work. The pumps were actually starting to overheat again. The tankless was short cycling again. I could not figure it out to the point where I was going to cry. I had to like shut this thing down for like a day and a half to try and figure out. It does not make any sense that a one six horsepower pump at max speed can't keep this thing running. Like basically you're running a shower where tons of water is flowing through it. I do have a check valve on this one that I need to remove. 
And both of these pumps have internal check valves, which people online and even in the directions say that you should remove them. But the pumps don't make any sense to me because if both pumps are on at the same time, or if one is on by themselves, I don't want this water flowing backwards or trying to get back down through this way. So the internal check valves are left on, but I mean, they literally take less than an ounce to push down so water can flow. So it's not like you're gonna burn the pump out because the pump can't push that up and let the water go around. So I left the check valves in, even though they say to remove them. But again, um, this one is much stronger. This probably has a pound or so of pressure, but that can't be the problem because this thing has been set up for three years and it's been running fine, minus we've been using more propane that I've wanted to. But after days, I finally figured it out. And up in here on the tankless, this right here, if you can see it, that screws off right there. And inside of there is a micro mesh screen. I unscrewed it after watching a YouTube video just to look at more maintenance on the Renai if I was missing anything. And that micro screen was covered in green slime. It was like 95% clogged. It washed right off with a little bit of water, but can anyone tell me where the hell green slime came from? We're using distilled water at 50%. And the other 50% is this uh, Crytek 100, which is a food-based uh, antifreeze. So if you were to ever like dump this out in the yard, you're not gonna kill an animal if they come and lick it up because it tastes sweet. But it's the color of pink and distilled water obviously has no minerals or anything in it. So where the hell did green slime come from? But if anybody can answer that, I would love to know. But uh, this summer, we are gonna do some maintenance on this and I don't wanna get any air in it again. So we'll be able to shut it down right here. We'll be able to shut it down at the pumps. But two more maintenances that I have to do is one, just getting rid of this check valve since we already have one in the pump. That'll make the uh, basement one probably run a little bit more smoothly because we're not having to overcome some pressure here and two we've got a screen right here also that we can unscrew but the screen in there is like massive it's uh probably a good like two millimeter or more size uh holes in there it's only catching like large debris which i highly doubt there's any large debris in there because i was clean uh in getting this installed but that micro filter up in there that's crazy that that thing was completely clogged almost and uh it was basically stopping all flow so again kind of a blessing that our pumps went out we had to upgrade anyway we're going to be more efficient spend less money on uh, propane now hopefully but that was definitely not doing anything a uh, a good service to have a filter completely clogged because no water was going through there we were probably spending way too much in gas but again thankfully we were able to find a problem oh and one other thing i bought this I don't know if it works or if I really even need it, but it's a neutralizer. Basically, since these are both condensating boilers, a lot of water runs out of these tanks. It goes all the way down there into that little giant, and then that little giant pumps it all the way over to the uh, sump pump hole. It drops down in the sump pump pit, mixes with kind of a little bit of water that constantly stays in there, and then when it fills up enough, the uh, sump pump kicks it out into the yard. But I read online that uh, the condensate water that comes out of these is highly acidic. Somebody said they tested them and it was an acidity of about five. So it's actually not that acidic. That's probably about as much as like a can of Coca-Cola. But by putting in this, somebody said that they retested what drops out the bottom end and it neutralized it all the way down to a seven. So basically right there in the middle between an acid and a base so that it won't harm anything. But the fact that uh, PVC is plastic, the little giant is plastic, and we've got plastic hose going all the way over there, um, acidic water shouldn't hurt those. But since our sump pump is cast iron, that could be problematic. But I, we're not dropping that much water down into a large pit where there's already water sitting in there. So it's basically getting neutralized anyway. But I've got to get that installed. I think it maybe should help. Or if it is recommended to just not let that water be so acidic and everyone should have a neutralizer. Let me know what you guys think about that. If it was uh, worth like the $60 to buy. But anyway, back to the rest of the video. But again, I just wanted to show you guys a video of my mistakes. As some of you are the uh, longtime viewers or looking around, you're probably noticing some things done 
Yes, we have got the flat ceilings all mud and taped. I've got a video on that where uh, we're going over the mud and tape and how we're actually gonna trim out the ceiling and make it look awesome instead of just painting it flat and being all boring. But yeah, we got a few more projects that we're working on slowly and surely like always, but uh, this took uh, two days for me to basically try to figure out and fix. And again, so far, so good, fingers crossed. But until next time, don't make mistakes like I did. Good luck in your builds. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.